you are about to embark on a culinary journey that will change your lives forever. You will accomplish things in this kitchen you never knew were possible. It's not going to be easy, but I promise you, it will be worth it. Tonight, Canada's top 50 home cooks prepare to audition for the biggest culinary competition in the country. They've been invited to Toronto after a nationwide search. I'm from Montreal. Whitehorse, Yukon. I'm from Leduc, Alberta. Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. They're from all walks of life. I'm a social services worker. I'm a rural veterinarian. I'm a stay-at-home mom. And they all have a dream. I want to have a grilled cheese food truck. To open up my own bakery. My own line of barbecue products. To win Master Chef Canada. But first, they'll need to impress three of the biggest names in the culinary world. Michael Bonaccini. Unbelievable. This is a league of its own. Claudio Aprile. That is delicious. Pow. And Alvin Long. I want to devour that whole dish. Tonight, the judges meet the top 50. Congratulations to all of you. But only the best of the best will move forward in the competition. That means earning one of these. I'm going to be making a take on a Halifax Donaire. A 10-layer cinnamon tort filled with Saskatoon Berry Chantilly Cream. I am making a crispy wild mushroom risotto cake and seared scallops. Those who earn white aprons will fight to keep them in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. It's there that we're going to test you, pushing you to levels of skill and creativity that you didn't even know you had. Each week, are you ready? They'll face intense challenges. Now, we need fries, people. Come again! They'll cook for world-class performers. The cast and crew of Cirque du Soleil service starts now. World-class chefs. <gasps> Howdy, home cooks of Canada. See that? It's perfect. And in world-class restaurants. Don't touch my plate, please. There's not enough. I need those steaks, guys. Come on. They'll have to overcome their limitations. Medic. And push themselves like never before. This is not a time now to give up hope. Nerves, pressure can get the best of anyone. Cook like your life depends on it. Because in this competition, it does. Yes! yes. At stake is $100,000 and a life-changing title. There can only be one winner, and their journey starts tonight. You are Canada's 50 best home cooks, and one of you standing in this room will become Canada's next Master Chef. It's the first day of the MasterChef Canada auditions, and these home cooks must prepare a dish that could change their lives forever. I've been dreaming of this moment for a long time, like probably since I was like 10 years old. I'm gonna rock their socks off. Feeling the pressure, but trying to keep it together. <laughs> they have one hour to prep their signature dish for the judges. I'll cook for a MasterChef apron. I'll also cook for $100,000. I need this white apron more than anything in the world. Yeah. The first home cook to try for an apron is one of the competition's youngest, 26-year-old Sabrina from Montreal. I'm good at this. I don't think that there's anything that I couldn't cook. Everything I know about cooking comes from my family. We're a big family. I had to cook to help out. My sister gets in on it, and we kind of compete with each other. Who can do it faster? Who can do it quicker? It's on its way. My sister is not just my sister. She's my best friend. This competition is pretty important. It's I'm giving up quite a bit back home. My sister is getting married in two weeks. Do I be there for my big sister, who's always been there for me? Or do I give it my all? Because it's Master Chef. Each home cook will have five minutes to plate their signature dish for the judges. If Sabrina can get at least two yeses, she will earn a white apron and move forward in the competition. What's your name? Sabrina. What are you making today? I made uh, medaglioni ripieni with uh, wild mushroom and goat cheese and a fresh tomato sauce with uh, roasted eggplant folded in. Who taught you how to make pasta? My grandmother. I come from a long line of home cooks, pasta makers. I'm in a mixed 
Italian Canadian family. Have you made this dish before? Yes, I have. For me, it's second nature, right? Are you done? I'm done. Sabrina, who's your biggest food critic? Probably my sister. Is this a dish that you think she'd be proud of? There's all the elements I know she loves. Beautiful aromas here. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Chef. So your own recipe, your family recipe? It's a sauce that I grew up on. It's a recipe that comes from trial and error. Trial and error, eh? Trial and error. How are you? Nervous. <laughs> you made the pasta? I think I've made pasta more times than I can count. It's pretty. There's a real combination of confidence, insecurity. Where does that come from? I guess I know my food is good. I just don't like to shout it at the top of my lungs. Are you sure it's good? I know it's good. OK. You know, Sabrina, there was a lot of heart in that dish. Nice ravioli. Sauce, need a bit more liquid. It was a bit dry for me. You're good, but I'm afraid it's a no. Yeah, chef. Sabrina, there's no doubt that you have skill. That's a fantastic ravioli. That pasta was textbook. So you do want this, right? I'm stuck in the middle because of what I'm giving up. What are you giving up? My sister's getting married in two weeks. My only sister. So it's a lot. I was criticized for taking the choice to come, and it's almost like I'm ashamed to want it so bad. Who criticized you? The woman that taught you how to make that dish? Yeah. <laughs> it's ironic, because she's probably the reason why I'm a yes. Thank you. Sabrina, you put out a dish today that was off the chart. It was absolutely spectacular. I think you have a very difficult decision to make. You can go to your sister's wedding, or you can come up here and get an apron from me. what I had to do. I love my sister, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. It's on, man. It's so on. I felt guilty, and now I'm really proud. The next home cook to audition is John, a former pro football player who's determined to grill his way to a white apron. I know I brought a lot of steaks, but I, I want to have some options. I played for the BC Lions. We won the Grey Cup in 2011 greatest time of my life. My plan was to play three more years, make some nice money, open a restaurant, and then I hurt myself during a game. It knocked me out, it ended my career. While I was rehabbing, I spent all of my time in the kitchen. This is like football for me. When I'm cooking, I'm at home. This is my comeback. Hello. This guy's a giant. What's your name? My name is John. And what are you making today? Uh, a steak. And then my grandma used to make this progi tower. So this is kind of an ode to her. So John, what is it about cooking that you enjoy so much? I love the, the creativity. I'm curious, what are you wearing around your neck? It's a Grey Cup ring. I used to play football for the BC Lions. Can I take a closer look? Yeah. Wow, it's yeah. incredible. It's my life's work. 
it's like a reminder of like what it really takes to be great. I got hurt really bad and I've just been battling back injuries since. I just lost everything and now I'm coming back. This will change my life, guys. Five, four, three, two, one. You wanted what, medium rare? Yeah. Perfect medium rare. You want this, don't you? More than, more than anything. The last two years has been so rough. What do you do when you get hit hard? You bounce back up. That's right. This is my bounce back. Thank you. Thank you. So how did you uh, make this pierogi tower? So I, I mashed the breasted potatoes, made the classic pierogi dough with sour cream. It's an interesting addition. Okay, thanks, John. Thank you. Hey, John. Hello. That was a tough one. I see the sinew? Yeah, it's the silver, right? Yeah, right yeah. there, the sinew. You know, it's chewy. If you're gonna carve a steak and you have like 10 pounds of meat here, yeah. <laughs> and maybe eight ounces here, if you're picking a football team, you would take the best. And the rest would be cut. John. Yes. I thought the pierogi tower was wonderful and an all around great job. For me, it's a yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. John, I'm a tough chef, but I don't like my beef tough. You know, it was just very, very chewy. I'm afraid it's a no. Well, listen, I disagree with Alvin a little bit here. I got a very tender piece of meat, but it's a very tough decision because the caliber of cooks that are behind you are way, way up here. I want this to get everything in my life back on track. I need this. If you make it through, this will be one of the hardest things you've ever done. I enjoyed the food. Flavors were fantastic. But there's something else that resonated with me much more. And it's you. You have a fighting spirit. I see that. It's a yes. <laughs> No one knows how to compete like me. I'm back. I'm back and I'm just, ugh, so excited. Next up is Crystal, a mother and hospital clerk from Gander, Newfoundland. Go, Newfies! I'm here to win it. I'm absolutely driven about cooking, like food just speaks to me. Rock and the rock. <laughs> my most favorite thing to do is to cook for people. It's looking good. I would like to open my own catering company, go into people's homes and to cook for them. I think I would be well sought after. <laughs> Hi there, what's your name? My name is Crystal and I'm from Gander, Newfoundland. What is it that you're cooking? I am making a Wicked Ska. Everything in Newfoundland that's good is called Wicked and a good meal is called a Ska. And the Ska is a good jig. So I'm gonna cook you up stuffed pork tenderloin with a Newfoundland dressing. Here on the mainland, they like to call dressing stuffing. Crystal, who's rooting for you back in Newfoundland? I just had my nine-year wedding anniversary just before I came here, and I have a three-year-old daughter. Every time she goes to eat her supper, she says, my mommy is the best cooker. What's that you're putting in the pan? This is Newfoundland partridge berries. And that's sugar. Oh, lots of sugar. You have 30 seconds. Oh, that is good. Ooh, that's hot. And throwing spoons on the floor. My stuff. Your time's up. Crystal. Hi. How are you? I'm ball of nerves right now. Your eyes look like they can see into my soul. <laughs> it makes me nervous. Well, 
We got a lot of sugar here. You think that was a good idea? I like sweet. I'm excited to try your dish. Thank you. It's starting to blur the lines between savory and dessert. I like that a lot. Reminds me of Thanksgiving. Oh, that's that, good. Is that the intention? Yes. So you stuff the pork tenderloin? Yes. And what's in the dressing or Dress, stuffing? Dressing. It's Newfoundland summer savory. Uh, salt, pepper, butter, and onions, and breadcrumbs. Hmm. And you made the bread? My nanny taught me how to make my bread. How badly do you want this? Oh, I want this more than anything in the whole entire world. And if I can do what I love, I'd be living the dream. I already had the perfect family. Now if I could have the perfect career, it would just... Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Crystal, I found your dish very familiar, and it really did remind me of Thanksgiving. I love the berries, which is fantastic. Great, fresh, poppy flavor, just cut through everything. The pork, perfectly cooked, and that's difficult to do when you're stuffing something, and you achieve that. It's a yes. <laughs> Crystal, your stuffed pork tenderloin, for me, was a little sort of lacking in texture. I, I wanted something that was a nice contrast to the rich sort of bright flavors. So it's a no. Crystal, there are elements in the plates that are quite good. Yes. <laughs> but I don't see a lot of balance in that dish. There's a lot of sugar, dessert, main course together. Doesn't quite belong there. I would just love to give you a yes because you're such a sweet person. I'll have to say still no. Please do not give up cooking. Do not give up your dream. And do not leave without giving the three of us a big hug. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. The very nice dish. I made top 50 out of all of Canada. I'm gonna keep on cooking, living the dream. Like really, you can't ask for no better than that. MasterChef Canada is a life-changing opportunity, and some home cooks have put their careers on hold to be here. What do you do for a living? I'm a tax officer with the government. I'm still a student. I study pharmacy. I've been a daycare teacher for the past four years. I've had a lot of different careers, but something has always drawn me back to food. I had to leave my job. You quit your job to come here and see us? Yes, because food is my life. I put my studies on delay right now. To be honest, this is a dream of mine. In the past few years, I've noticed that I'm not fulfilled. So it's a no-brainer. You got to cook, right? Absolutely. I'm happy to see that you have that passion. You're determined. The scallops, they were cooked perfectly. You do have the skill. I thought it was absolutely outstanding. It's a yes. It's a yes. Thank you, Chef. Yes. If it means there's one less tax inspector in Halifax for the next short while, they can thank MasterChef Canada for it. After a parade of delicious dishes, expectations are sky high, and some home cooks are struggling to meet them. Hola. Hello. Can I break the ice and give you a hug? Five minutes, five minutes. Come on, come on. I am here now to please you. Tell me, what are you gonna please us with? Crispy tacos with lobster and blue cheese. Blue cheese, lobster. I am the next master chef. I'll sing so loud, I'll make you deaf. <laughs> I actually brined this chicken using an ISI whip and some nitrogen to force in a 2% salt brine. Are you concerned about the flavor that fuel will impart on the protein? I'm sorry? I want to open up your beautiful brains, scoop them out, consume them, and become smarter. That's creepy. <laughs> what is that you're putting on? This is bagoong, it's shrimp paste. Shrimp, raw shrimp paste? So you're putting some raw wine in there? Yes. Okay, and usually you kind of cook the alcohol out. I don't want that. You don't want that? Okay. You finish? Yeah, I'm done. blue cheese might be a little too overpowering for a delicate flavor of a lobster. Those are the softy pillowy ones. I don't know if I get much sleep if I slept on a pillow like that. 
it's a no for me. Me, it's a no. Thank you. Bye-bye. After a string of disappointing dishes, Michael, a 28-year-old accessories designer, plans to turn things around in style. I dress like I'm a million bucks. I'm gonna cook like I'm a million bucks. I'm gonna make a restaurant quality dish. And it's gonna be beautiful. Fashion and food go hand in hand. I look good, I like to eat good. My strength to the home club is number one, confidence. What's your name? Michael. You guys look handsome as ever. What are you making? Seared scallop, separated with yellow thin tuna sashimi. What is your dream, Michael? Food dream. Open up a restaurant that gives a person the feeling that they love spending money there. I want someone to come out with a $1,200 bill and say, you know what, that was worth it for me. Any of the other competitors threaten you in any way? No, not at all. The other competitors really seem to be using things that are inside the box. I make things look pretty. And you think that's enough to get you through? If the taste matches the look, I really do think it's enough to get someone through, especially me. I'm here to prove to the world that maybe I'm not just a pretty face in a good suit, but I can cook too. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm excited for you to try that. Well, that's a happy face. I find that's trending really hard right now is negative space. So I wanted to leave a lot open on the plate. I think it's visually appealing. Is there a sauce? There's a slight vinaigrette on it. I didn't want to overpower it. So in your mind, you're gonna win this, right? I'm here for a learning experience, but also to take that MasterChef trophy. Go big, go home. Thank you. Michael, good to see you. So what's in there that's going to give me those great flavors that I hope will satisfy my palate? The texture you'll feel from the quinoa will really give you that starch that you need in the dish. The lemon grit will give that citrus flavor, and I feel like the fennel truly does a blessing to the dish. You happy with the way that's cooked? Extremely. You've perfected this? I know I have. All right, thank you. Thank you. Michael. Hello, sir. You call me sir. Are you intimidating? No, I have respect. That's good, I like respect. Pretty, isn't it? You like things pretty, right? I love things pretty. I do too. Michael, what do you think of that plate? I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I think it tastes better than it looks. You don't lack any confidence, do you? No, sir. I think it looks great. It doesn't have the flavor that I need, though. There's no boom. It's flat. I don't see substance. So for me, it's a no. I respect that. Michael, so is this a case of style over substance? I don't believe so. I don't think so either. What I liked about the dish was the crunch of that quinoa that added that amazing contrast. The subtleties of the citrus flavor from that vinaigrette and the luscious richness of the tuna. It was an interesting dish, well presented with a lot of style. But you knew that already. It's a yes. Thank you. Michael, one yes and one no. It's all up to me. There are elements in there that certainly have substance. The scallops, the sashimi. But then, have you provided your substance to elevate it? I do believe so. Well, I'll tell you what, Michael. I'm worried. I'm worried about one thing. I'm worried that this white apron would clash with that outfit of yours. Come on out. I'm a yes. It's a fine dining dish. Thank you very much. This white apron is looking better than any suit in my closet right now. <laughs> that says a lot. As the auditions continue, the pressure builds. But the next home cooks face it head on with a big helping of confidence and comfort food. My name is Nathan. Today I'm going to be cooking fish and chips 
beer aged cheddar bacon jalapeno soup. Savory chicken and waffles with fried chicken. The dish that you're doing, do you think it's a little simple? You've got to try them. Are you concerned at all about standing up to the other cooks? Oh, God, no. If I was concerned about the other cooks, I wouldn't be here. What do you make of the competition back there? There's obviously a few people who I could probably do without. I don't think they have the palate that I have. I've been to Istanbul. I lived in London for a while. I lived in Australia, Thailand, Italy, Spain. And you're doing as chicken and waffle. <laughs> totally. I hope you like it. I'm sure to please any stomach. Pretty salty. Chicken and waffles. I think that was a smart move. It's got all the textures that you want. It's tasty. Lisa? This was a little bit like hot camp food. So for me, it's going to be a no. I love your confidence, but it's a no. Pretty bold. Fish and chips for a competition of this magnitude? Absolutely. The fish is impeccable. It's crispy, moist in the middle. My answer is yes. The next home cook to try for an apron is Tammy a retail clerk and mother of six from Agassiz, B.C. I believe in my dish. It's different, but it's all me. I have a real passion for wild game cooking. I love to hunt, and I can support my family without going into a grocery store. I feel that this is my time, and I feel that I've earned it. Five years ago, my husband was tragically taken in a workplace accident. I was left with six beautiful children that I raise on my own. No matter what life throws at you, you can just keep on trudging forward, and you can finally get to your goal. Hi there. What's your name? My name is Tammy. And what are you cooking for us today? Smoked elk carpaccio. Interesting. Tammy, what does this dish say about you? I enjoy the wilderness. My daughter and I hunt, and uh, that is the reason why I chose the elk as my primary protein. I'm a mother of six children. <laughs> How are they going to feel if you get in? I know it's going to be tough, but we've been through worse. My husband was, was uh, killed in a workplace accident five years ago. You're raising six children on your own? Yes, sir. The last five years has been, it's been a challenge. So you're bringing a lot of strengths to this competition. Yes. I like to be, uh, be an example for single moms and for widows out there that you can accomplish anything. Is this a dish that uh, the kids at home would love? Yes, the kids enjoy it. Is that right? So you've done yeah. this before? Yes, I have. When you smoke meat, it can either work out really well, or if it's too much, it tastes like an old ashtray. Yes, sir. Wow. That's impressive. Who are you doing this for? I'm doing this for me. When I filled out my application, it said, what is your ambition in life? And I had to sit back and I thought, I haven't thought about what my ambition is for years. Thank you. You're welcome. This looks very, very beautiful. But why did you choose elk? Elk is succulent, it's soft, it's like butter. Where'd you learn how to plate this way? I taught myself. You're a good teacher. <laughs> Thank you. So you have a little bit of crispy basil, pine nuts? Yes. A lot of flavor there. What's this sauce? Uh, it is a fig balsamic with uh, a basil infused olive oil. It's elegant, full of flavor. It's left me thinking. Tammy, you did something very unique with your dish. There were so many wonderful notes, so many great flavors, and that smoke came through really well. So it's a yes from me. Thank you. Tammy, this was the first time I've ever had elk. The way you do it, I'll have it again. It's definitely a yes. It was incredibly moist incredibly flavorful. That was absolutely delicious. 
Come on up here and get your apron, Tammy. Oh, my lord. There we go. Congratulations, Tammy. Look forward to seeing more of you. I feel exhilarated. I feel like this huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders, and now I can work, work for what I want to achieve, which is to be Master Chef Canada. Next up is Jennifer, a self-described chatterbox from Vernon, BC. My strategy to get a white apron, I am going to talk my way into those judges' hearts and help them to realize that I am going to be Canada's next Master Chef. They are gonna love this pie. My cooking style and my personality are pretty much one and the same. Oh, snap! Just like me being loud and bold and sometimes a bit obnoxious, so is my food. It's go time! Hi there. Hi, gentlemen. I'm Jennifer. So what is the dish you're preparing for us? Blueberry, basil, and goat cheese pie. Not your grandmother's blueberry pie. I make the best pie crust recipe, hands down, because I think that if I served you anything less than that, it would be an absolute disrespectful move on my part. You've got five minutes to present us with your dish, okay? I talk a lot when I'm nervous, can you tell? I have waited my whole life for this moment. You get one crack. This is a turning point in my life. I'm picked last in sports. I was a terrible athlete. Oh my gosh, we won't even go there. You're running out of time. You gotta go. I was never the popular kid in school. In fact, I got picked on a lot. So if anybody is watching this right now from where I grew up, <laughs> lots changed. <laughs> so going home, I have to tell you, is not an option. And I will fight to the death to make sure that I'm walking out of there with that white apron. Jennifer, Jennifer, are you finished? <laughs> it's ready for your tasting. What I have for you is a blueberry basil and goat cheese pie top. It's kind of like the top of the muffin. It's always the best part. What's your food dream, Jennifer? I would love to have a food truck. And you think this I pie will get you there? That pie is absolutely going to get me there because you want to know something about this pie? I've had people say they don't like blueberries. People that don't like pie in general tell me, wow, I would eat this pie again. Thanks, Jennifer. Tell me, Jennifer, I mean, this is not my grandmother's pie, right? It's nobody's grandmother's Nobody. pie. I don't want to stereotype myself as the pie girl. Well? I realize that people look at what I've made and that said, oh, you're the pie girl, huh? Just, just listen, listen. I know, I don't ever shut up. There's definitely a lot going on there. I'm speechless. I want to ask you what you think about this pie, because you think it's delicious, right? So does everybody back there. <laughs> it smells good. You should see how it tastes. So Jennifer, you know, for me, the pie, had some great layers, great complexity. The crust was light. The filling had some very fresh, bright flavors. I'm a yes. Yes. Jennifer, not your grandmother's pie is not for me. That pie was lacking in texture. I, I wanted something that was a nice contrast to the rich sort of bright flavors. It's a no. Jennifer, the crust nice and crispy, and I can taste that blueberry. Growing up in Scarborough, I love blueberry. I had some growing in my backyard. I'm just concerned about your listening skill. Can you promise me just one thing? Can you just keep quiet for five seconds so I can put an apron around your neck? Oh my gosh. Alvin, you're getting a full body hug. Oh, I'm looking well at that too. Oh, <laughs> yes. I've got to prove that I am willing to listen and become Canada's next Master Chef. Coming up, can a concrete worker from Surrey, BC, pave his way to glory? You think uh, working with concrete is your calling in life?
one of the West Coast people. The last home cook of the day is David, a concrete worker and family man from Surrey, BC. Come on, Master Chef Canada, boys. Where's the judges? My wife and kids are everything to me. My four-year-old and my six-year-old are absolutely everything. I'm a better person because of them. When Dad cooks, we judge him. I'm always in competition mode. Even at home, I'm competing. My wife's my high school sweetheart. I've spent more time with her on this earth than without her, and she's a strong supporter. I may be a concrete worker, but my passion, my love, and what makes me happiest is cooking. Hello, chefs. What's your name? My name is David. Hi, David. What dish are you going to be cooking for us? A uh, black hot sable fish and Dungeness crab potato salad. Wow. So, David, why are you here? I want to have this opportunity to change where I'm, what I'm currently doing. I'm a concrete contractor, so I do concrete work. I started doing concrete at 17 years old. I made some poor decisions. I actually uh, didn't finish school. I only have a grade 10 education, so when an opportunity like this came up to compete in something that I absolutely love, at my age, I, I signed up. Who inspires you to cook your best? My wife, my little boys, four and five. They're amazing. 30 seconds, what are you putting on now? I smoked an egg. You smoked a hard boiled egg? I, I smoked the yolk. David. Hello, Chef. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. The presentation is terrific. Really nice. Good sense of style. Thank you. Where did you learn to cook uh, cod like that? I've been cooking it for some time. Yeah, it's very important to get that skin crispy. Well, it is. Yeah. You're absolutely right. David, thank you. Thank you. Your boys, do you like your food? They love my food. Can they eat crab? I'm four and five. You know, I think they're still on carrots. When I eat oysters, I actually hide them because they love eating raw oysters. Oh, cod's nicely done. Flakes, smoke egg yolk. Yes. This is the miso sauce here. It is miso, sable fish. They love each other. Those are concrete mason hands. Yes, chef. And those hands did this. You think working with concrete is your calling in life? You know, unfortunately, I was young and had no choice. Is this your time to turn it around, do you think? This is it. This is validation that I can turn things around. David, you said you made some poor choices, but clearly getting married and starting a family were not poor choices, were no. they? Can you introduce your family to us, please? OK. Look, there's a lot of capability there, I think. All of us? The presentation, the flavor. It's nicely done. What a beautiful family. Thank you. My wife, Tannis, and this is Nuno. Far end, that's JJ. JJ, how old are you? I'm five. I'm turning six in eight days. Wow. What do you think of your dad's cooking? Is he better with concrete or with pasta? Stuff. Well, let me tell you what I think of what your dad made today. We have tasted a lot of food. It's the best dish I've had so far. Incredible. I've never seen anyone that is a bricklayer or laying cement put food on a plate the way you did it. So elegant. It's a yes for me. Thank you. David. You have a beautiful family, and your food is beautiful. So it's a yes from me as well. Thank you. JJ, can you come on up here and help me with something? You're better dressed than us. <laughs> 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 we think your dad is an excellent cook. And we'd like you to give him something. Do you think you can go down and give him that? Of course, the choice to have a family was the best choice, but this has been the best choice in a long time. 
next time on Master Chef Canada. Kind of lost for words. Better cut. The auditions continue. Yeah! Now. And the people who earn white aprons must fight to keep them. It's a stress test that will determine the top 16. Not going home today. Is that on purpose? I have my military hat on and it's war. It's do or die. Too much pressure, too much pressure.